Welcome back, everybody. I'm GTF, and this time I'm going to be playing PatchCon, Defend the Library. The game made by Twilight Frontier, the same people that made Mega Mario, which you've seen me play through already, as well as the two official Toho fighting games, and a personal favorite fighting game of mine, Eternal Fighter Zero. The story here is scrolling up right now. It's the general gist of it is Pacholi has grown tired of relying on the incompetent fairy maids from the mansion to guard her books in the library, so she has created an army of clay golems in the image of the various residents of Gensokyo. And some unknown force has stolen the process to do this as well, and now the library is under siege. Yes, this is a Toho real-time strategy game. I'll give you a minute to let that sink in. Time's up. Yeah, here's our team select mode. This is the build-your-own-team mode where Kane and Suako are additionally added for your choosing, but we're going to go with the Phantasmagoria team because it has four of my favorite characters in the entire series, and I like saying Phantasmagoria. 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 All right. Done. This is the prep screen. Going to spawn some units. We're just doing a normal mode run because it's, oh, it's you know an actual sort of playing mode, so to speak. Easy. Well, it's easy. We're not doing easy. But the idea here is to last 24 hours on the game clock there in the upper right. But the harder difficulty saying that clock goes a lot longer, and we'd be here rambling for maybe 30 minutes or so if we were doing hard or lunatic mode. So I'm not going to subject you to all that unless you really want me to. Then I'll. Yeah, I'll maybe do some of the other game modes. This is what it is. It's a real-time star a re real time strategy game with more mass-produced Toho characters. Right now we have Medicine Melancholy, which I just selected a moment ago, the ones in the middle left. The green ones with the parasols is my absolute favorite character, Yuka Kazami. And the little black ones down the bottom are everyone's favorite trashy tabloid writing in Tengu, Aya. All your units are divided up into three into one of three types. Melee, bullet, and flight. And they have a rock, paper, scissors kind of relationship with each other. Melee are strong against bullets. Bullets are strong against flying, and flying are strong against melee. The key to surviving these waves that keep coming on regular intervals is using the correct type of unit to kill what's coming at you. As you can see, I lost all of my eyes there because, well, it was flying against flying, and ayas are unfortunately some of the weaker, or the weakest of the flying units. I like them because they move very fast and they attack very fast. That almost makes up for them being kind of weaker than the other flying options. Medicine Mel medicine is okay. She's kind of... When you compare her to the other bullet-type units, at least of her sort of class, she is more or less like a slightly weaker version of Alice, except she doesn't spawn with dolls like Alice does until unless you level her up to level 6. And in the trade-off for being a little weaker in most of those regards is that she fires faster. She fires twice per... She attack each medicine attacks twice for every second. So she attacks a little faster, and she's a little they're a little cheaper to work with. It costs money, of course, it costs money to create each of these units, and upgrading them costs even more money. And the more you upgrade units, the more expensive it comes to produce them. So yeah, you have this little cyclical relationship there. You now, if you need to make money to get more to get more guys to kill more people or to make more money, etc., etc. Cyrano, and this, uh, here comes a wave of Cyrano. Cyrano's are really good units in this game. They are dirt cheap. They're kind of weak, but they level up fairly. They have pretty strong level up gains. And, like I said, the, the value with them is that they are ridiculously cheap. The, the only ones I like a little better than them are Melee's. They have much better defensive abilities all around. They're stronger in general, and they're not much more expensive. Every unit has special skills. Such as, I don't know, such as the Kamachis I've just spawned. 
Right at ad base, they have a special ability which will let them, you know, randomly instantly kill whatever they're fighting, whatever they are attacking, which applies to to the giant boss class and enemies that come in ways of you know. That very handy when it actually kicks in. Of course, th these sort of skills activate based on chance and, you know, not really too helpful to reduce. You literally just purely rely on them. Just kind of wing it and take them as they come. As you may level up, they may gain more powers as well. For example, if the, Yuka, the Yukas that I'm using, if you level them up to level, to level 6, they gain the ability to reflect bullets and the bombs that and the attacks from flight type units back at them. Again, they just randomly activate. Yuka's I like because they are particularly the strongest in the game as far as base stats go. Or base offense, I should say. They start with a whopping four, 38 attack power, which is the highest of any of the melee units. And they, get, they grow at a pretty an average 11 per upgrade. So they start pretty strong and they stay strong throughout the whole game, more or less. The problem is they are the slowest attackers in the game. They only attack once per second, barely over once per second. Most, they are pretty much bottom level with the slowest, and they are kind of expensive, but in general they're fairly high quality units. Strong HP, strong, pretty strong defensive power, decent moving speed, the only pro you know, so the only problem is that they attack the slowest, however that's almost compensated for by the fact by the raw damage they hit with, and the fact that they're that by default they attack an area in front of them rather than just an individual target. And if I recall correctly, they're one of the only melee units that can do that in general, let alone you know let alone even after upgrading. Some will gain I think one like one other unit might gain the ability to attack an area in front of them as far as melee units go. For as much as the last person on my li on my team here is Shikieki, who was the final boss from Phantasmagoria Flower View. All the this is, that's why this is the Phantasmagoria team. All, this is where the all these characters were primarily from. Yuka actually has earlier origins. If for anyone who's watched my Lotus Land story run, but more or less everyone else t in, on this team more or less premiered in Phantasmagoria Flower View, which was the ninth game. It was actually a competitive shooter game, very much akin to Twinkle Star Sprites, which is sort of like a combination of a shoot 'em up and a puzzle game, and a competitive puzzle game at the same time. Fun stuff. You should try it, folks. Aya has been in other has been in a lot of other games. She's become a very popular character since she first premiered. And she actually first premiered in the in a source book, which was written in the format of one of her newspapers, actually. Medicine, uh, Medicine Melancholy first premiered in Phantasmagoria Flower View, and then she later returned in the, in 9.5, which was Shoot the Bullet, the only game where Rimu was not a playable character. You only could play as Aya. And the idea was to take people's pictures. It's kind of a weird take on the Toho games, but it was pretty fun, too. And next we got a wave of Tays coming. It's okay, they're not too bad. Another a very important key to this game is to remember to upgrade your units and to spread out your money pretty well. Because as time goes on, the enemy waves start getting stronger, and if you don't upgrade, you're not going to be able to keep up. And even if you have the little triangle advantage that you're on your favor, you might still be slaughtered. Like here. My Kamachis were not particularly built up at the moment compared to the opponents, and even though it was a neutral, that was a neutral case, that was melee versus melee, they still kind of got slaughtered. On the other hand, the Yukas up there fared much better in that other encounter. Ah, uh, those are Mitori. That, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. She is throwing cucumbers. Victoria is interesting like that. She has the weakest offensive power, but she has the insane has an insanely high attack speed. Not very good targeting on moving enemies, but that's okay because enemies will start charging towards them anyway. The only exception to this are Marissa's, which ignore anything in their path and go straight for the bookcase. Anything else you can sort of distract by 
putting some units in front of them. They'll actually leave the bookcase to go attack the nearby units. And although I still there's still one more member on my team to use, which was Shigeki, I'm not using her in this run because for normal mode it's just kind of short and it's going to spread out my money too much and my units are not going to be upgraded enough to handle the mobs. They're better going to come a little later as the time goes. <laughs> 